We now as Deputy Chief Monitor of the OSC Special Monitoring Mission uh, to Ukraine, Alexander Hug. Alexander, thanks for being with us. Your group uh, was there this morning. Uh, they were one of the first on the scene. As you see it, what happened there and who did it? Uh, good evening. Indeed, the OSC Special Monitoring Mission has engaged quickly after the incident happened. A patrol to the scene uh, to the southern part of the city of Donetsk. Uh, our fact-finding is still ongoing. Uh, I can uh, inform already at this stage that our patrol has seen seven dead bodies at the scene, three in the bus, three just outside the trolley bus, and one uh, body in a nearby car. Uh, we have been able to identify these were three female bodies and three male bodies. The body in the car was not uh, possible to be identified. Uh, at this stage, as I have said, the fact-finding is ongoing and we will report uh, publicly as usual once we have concluded. But there are no early indications you can give us about any early thoughts about who, who may have carried this out? Uh, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission is mandated to establish facts and until we have established the facts that we can, I am not here to speculate and I refer to our public reporting that we do on a daily basis. Yeah, okay. And we're in the depth of winter then. Now, what's the general humanitarian situation like in Donetsk? Uh, in the area not controlled by the government, we observe the following uh, situations. Firstly, the ongoing conflict causes an increased toll on the civilian population with dead and injured and as well as civilian infrastructure. Second, it is difficult for humanitarian aid to access the area not controlled by the government and as you know the humanitarian community is very thin on the ground in the area not controlled by the government. Third, the withdrawal of governmental services from the eastern part uh, where it has no control, further uh, tightens supplies and creates some shortcomings and bottlenecks for the civilian populations. And last, the rule that in, uh, came into force today to have special permits to enter the parts not controlled by the government further tightens uh, the, the, the area up and especially vulnerable persons such as elderly, the young and the sick uh, continue to suffer most uh, from the current situation. I mean, both sides are blaming e each other as we know. The peace talks are ongoing. As you see it on the ground there, do you see any, any uh, is there any hope, realistic hope of a, a peaceful breakthrough anytime soon for peace to really take hold there or not? The OEC Special Monitoring had ever since its inception in March last year a robust presence in eastern Ukraine. Ever since that time we have been speaking to everyone in eastern Ukraine. We have continuous talks with those in effective control and we are hopeful and put everything we can into the game to ensure that dialogue is facilitated and the solution can be found. What is important is that the Minsk documents are being followed that the weapons are quiet and that heavy weapons are being withdrawn so that the civilian population can give, be given a reprieve and some tranquility, uh, especially now when tensions have risen significantly in the past two weeks. Alexander Hug, Deputy Chief Monitor of the OSC Special Monitoring Service, thank you for being on the programme there live with us. It's appreciated.